Hello YouTube, uh, this is day five and uh, here on the SSA website at ssa.org if you go into results under racing um, you can find the top here um, you find this you go to 2021 contests and you go down to um, 18 meter which I always have trouble finding you guys are probably laughing at me because you can see it faster than I can. And then you go into results and reports, and here you go. And uh, let me, yeah, so day five on July 4th. Um, Rich Owen, once again, great report. Um, it was quite a busy day. He had to be tired when he wrote this. I know I was. And... Uh, we had a lot of rain and thunder in the area at that time. But uh, CD sent us on a ternary task, and I'll show you that in a second visually. Southwest to Whiskey Knoll, out uh, to Drum Mountain, which is way out in the desert, and then way the hell down to the uh, south to this uh, big turn area called GB Intersection. I believe it was 40K, even though in the uh, data here, uh, the task, under the results, it says 20. That was the only way that I could work it out. Uh, and make it make it seem to work. So I, I think it was 40 because everybody pretty much just touched 40. And if you all, those of you who flew this will remember that. Um, but it was brutal down there. And I'll show you the weather here in just a second. This was a very, 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 very difficult task in terms of weather. And it shows how dire the decision making in an area task is and really th this could have scrambled the scores in any number of ways um i had a good day i very easily could not have had a good day and uh, i'll show you a few people who um had some miracles um <laughs> that i just found uh in researching some of the flights before this uh so anyway broke our hundred mile i don't even think we got close to it a million people were super early including one notable who was super early. And again, this is, comes down to the area task. You have to make a guess. How, how difficult is it going to be on this finish and getting home? And he probably made the right decision, in my opinion, based on what I saw at the time he did this. He was also leading again, and, um, you know, he turned, and he ended up being over an hour early, and it killed him. And... Uh, that's unfortunate uh, um but that's the way area task goes they are so they're they're just casinos you could start whenever you want you've got rain showers this sort of thing it's a huge desert area there's sun way to the east and we got away with it but at the time he got down there he probably made the right decision um and i'll show you that others rolled the dice area tasks <laughs> they are interesting um, I can't stand them. I prefer racing tasks. I think area tasks leave a lot of um, open variability and I understand that you know in this OLC kind of mindset that people like to follow the pretty clouds but when it comes to racing and you put all this effort and you drive 2,000 miles to a contest to have your contest blown on on just one decision um, that, that's so broad in the in the kind of uh, in, you know, interpretation of said data, um, it, it really is heart wrenching, and uh, you know it's very difficult. So, this was a great example of that. Um, he says the gaggle survived and came home. I'm not sure about that. I think the gaggle scattered to the wind and barely made it back, but you know, half hour plus early in many cases. Um, you can read this, of course, um, but. Third place was Robin Clark. He pulled off a miracle. I'm going to show you that. And then Jim Lee and Joe Bostick and I flew together the last half of the task. And it was really fun and really cool. It wasn't the prettiest thing in the world, but we got the distance and we got the time and ended up having great days. Obviously, uh, Joe wins in a Venice 2 CXM. Uh, Jim Lee uh, was uh, second in a JS1 and Robin Clark in an ASG29. I ended up being fifth. I'll show you that in a second. So 
yeah, let's go uh, back. And I want to show you the weather here. This is uh, Medio Blue, and they have a, um, a subscription, but it allows you to go back and up until 2020, unfortunately not any earlier than that, um, replay the the weather radar for that day so here is Provo this is about Nephi maybe right in here somewhere in here I think it actually might be here because that's probably Mount Nebo but I'm gonna replay the weather for you here um, if I click into this and click in hopefully I can do that oh yeah so I gotta go down okay so Sorry, I'm using a Mac and it doesn't work quite like the other. So this is at 1430. This is at our start time. And I'm just going to kind of draw the task. We go down here, way out here, and then down to here, and then home. And I'm going to just sort of put my turn point, you know, this isn't a big deal, but this is going south of the second turn south is where it really got difficult. And, uh, and we we're on task. I think it was a three hour and 30 minute task. We started at about 2.45, so finishing at 6.15. And you can see even, even at two at their starting time, there's showers right here in the turn area. And uh, that is 16.30, so that is 4.30. That is 5, 5.30. Trying to get down here into this turn area. It's almost entirely closed. Six and 6.30, and almost all the finishers were there by then. Um, this blocked off, this this shower here, I think blocked off the whole southern, southern edge of this first turn, and uh, this uh, the second one was, was open. So anyway, I'll just do a loop here again. That's 2.30, 3, 3.30, 4, 4.30, 5, 5.30, 6, 6.30. All right, so we'll close that close that and then let's open up the task day five come on I gotta open it up a little bit yeah so this is the task and uh, basically everybody just touches the top of this and touches the top of this because those showers were basically just controlling this high ground here. So everybody went pretty deep into here and on down in, in into this intersection, everybody just touched. Some people weren't even able to make it to this uh, GB intersection turn point. There were several landouts today and uh, I'm sorry here, that isn't rendering very well. Let me try and fix it. There we go. So that's the task. And let me close that. And of course, we've got Barograph 3D, uh, 2D, and uh, today these are the uh, the top 10. And let me go back to those real quick, just so we keep it consistent. Uh, so this is the standings for the day, but with wind score, um, Joe uh, Bostic in Ro uh, Romeo 9 wins the day. Beautiful flight. Uh, second, Jim Lee. Third, Robin Clark, and I, Robin, I'm going to single you out and show the miracle climb you got from 1,600 feet off the deck. It was awesome. I've never seen a thermal like that in CU. It's pretty cool. Uh, fourth is uh, Alan Adams and a JS3. Fifth, I was able to get fifth, Sean Fiddler. Sixth, Peter Dean. Oh, seventh, sorry, Andy Blackburn in his JS3. He's flying really consistent, excellent. Uh, Gary Itner, I think he had a relight or, or or something. He started really late, and this was a fantastic flight. He's probably started 20 minutes later than all of us. In fact, I can tell you, yeah, I started at um, 43. He started at 320, so uh, 33 minutes behind the group, and that was painful today, as you saw how hard it was to get into that um, third turn area or second. No, third turn area, the one to the south. Uh, so Gary was eighth, ninth, Tim Taylor, Venice 2. Hi, Tim. Good pilot. I just had a great Worlds and uh, flew very well. This is his home area, sort of. He came from Logan. And 10th, uh, Noel Wade. Noel has been 
killing it. And he must have had a problem on the first day. He was pretty far behind, and now he's he's grooving back up. And if you look here, yeah, he's 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 doing really well. You can see the rest of the scores as you wish. So I'm going to kind of rip through this one and show the exciting parts. Um, here's the 2D view. The camera's panned south. We're focused on Romeo Fox. I'm going to focus on 7 Tango uh, because I can describe my flight, at least from my perspective, and give you some um, value. And today I'm tired of looking down at the camera, which is uncomfortable, so I'm um, they're casting this thing to a big screen TV so I can see it a little bit better and it is so much nicer for this um, it was weak and you'll see a lot of people struggling to get up there were showers just to the north of us there was a big shower out here um, this was a ballsy day and I congratulate the CD for uh, calling this task this is a national championship more than 75% of the pilots finished, as you see from, from the score sheet. It was a doable task. It was on the edge, but it was a 3.30 uh, task, a 3, three hour, 30 minute task with, um, uh, you know, a thousand point day. And, uh, you know, that is outstanding. I'm glad we do this. Even, even though some of us might have landed out or had a bad day, it challenges our teams and, and our pilots, and it makes folks better. And, and the Nationals is a good place to do that. Um, and now today in 2024, most of the guys have motors anyway. And uh, you know, with good planning, this is a safe area to fly. Um, I'm just watching the paragraph here for the colored stuff. And I think it's uh, 20 now, so minus 6, 2. So I, I don't start for 45 minutes here. And you can see here the drop where the CD uh, calls us for the check-in. So they're still obviously launching. And as the last launchers launch, he'll call for the check-in altitude. And all the pilots have to descend and check and put at least one uh, flight recorder reading below a certain altitude. It looks like it might be 12,000. And down we go. I'm going to slow it down here. That was kind of a cool thing to look at. So I'll start with that, if you don't mind. And there's 7 Tango. And if I go back just a little bit. Yep. There I uh, am starting to come down. And it's kind of fun to watch. And I just corkscrewing on down. It looks like a thermal in reverse. And it looks like, yeah, I go down below 12 and then start climbing right back up immediately. And the way to do that, folks, is um, obviously is to find a thermal up at the top, um, core it, and then, and then try and come down with the wind drift to find it on the bottom. And that way you're minimizing the risk and you know that you're at least coming down with uh, a chance of lift. And in this case, I got right back into it and came right back up. And... On a day like today, I did not want to wait around. Once he calls for this, it's a given amount of time before the starters happen. So there's 220. So that's probably where the call came right there. 15 minutes to go. Down goes the fleet. 10 minutes to go. 5 minutes to go. And there the first starters take off. So being able to get down and get back up really quick um, in this kind of start procedure is really important. But I absolutely love this start procedure because you're able to start at your maximum altitude, maximum energy. Um, there's no coming out the top and descending, you know, close to other people. When you're doing this, uh, you can go out on your own, come down and climb up. There's no need to be in the starting area or even near the starting area to do this. It's a, my opinion, it's a much better system and I, I really enjoy it. And you'll notice as everybody came down, they're, they're pretty far away from each other, although this group looks to be climbing up together. The spread is, uh, is, is massive between all the pilots, and they're scattered all over the place, which I think is uh, a safe thing. All right, now I'm going to speed it up to 20 today, which is going to be a little fast to track. Um, you can see Zulu Lima and Papa Seven are um, are down on the ground right now, um, getting relights. So they they both have excellent flights to come back and and uh, get on the you know in the, in the top ten of the scoreboard.
All right, so they're starting to get close. You can see a couple starters have taken off. Alpha Alpha, who gets fourth for the day. Look at that. There's a call for an early starter. Uh, John Luban, Juliet Lima, and Hotel 7, Biff Huss. So they are out of here. And uh, if you look at the time from when we uh, go down, yeah, it, you know, it's, I think it's 15 minutes from the time he makes that call that you could start, but it could be 10. Yeah, it actually looks like it might be 10 minutes because here's the first starter, which was Juliet Lima. And, uh, yep. Okay. So I'm not going to stop this one as much as I have in the other days. I don't have as much time tonight um, to get this in. Um, but it looks like we're going here um, and we'll be relatively early. Um, only four or five people have started out ahead. Let me pull this down. There goes Romeo Fox. That's interesting. Romeo, I didn't notice that in the last time. Romeo Fox starts ahead. Zula Lima starts ahead. Um, I don't know why there's another Zula Lima showing down there. I must have uh, forgot to change the time zone in one of the traces. My apologies. Just ignore it. Okay. I'll let it run and try and describe this as best I can. Really nothing hyper dramatic down this first leg. Um, the, the first turn area, if I can zoom out here just a little bit, is, uh, you can see the turn area right here, is blocked by storms here in the back half. Um, so the southern end, that high terrain, is, is cooked with, uh, with storms, and uh, we're not going to be able to go super deep into that. And again, this is a three and a half hour task, and as you remember, we can see, looking out this way, big storms and buildups, and it's all moving north. So the big part of the task today is getting into this third turn area. I'll zoom out here a little bit so you can see it. Um, sorry, I got a new mouse, and it's much better, but it's still clunky. So yeah, really getting into this turn area is going to be the big challenge, and all of this is blown up, and there's high clouds and it's just, this just isn't good there's sun out here so this is where we can make some distance you could see I, I went to the top right I think that airspace is hot still so I couldn't go all the way into this so that's pretty far um, but um, obviously you need to line something up to come back but um, the pilots are looking out right now and there's a puckered feeling of oh my gosh this is going to be a tough one So that is a big gaggle. Um, you know, the first starters trickled out. Everybody else was getting up to altitude, and basically everybody went up as went out as fast as they could. Um, these first guys somehow got out a little bit earlier, and uh, I don't think there was much roulette today. I think it was pretty much climb up, get a good altitude, and and go um, as fast as you could. So um, climb rates here. 2.7, 4.1 for Tango Tango, 3.2 for Romeo 9, 4.8 for 2300 for Romeo Charlie. So you can see 6 to 10 knots, the occasional 4 to 5 knot climb, but it, it's, it's strong um, where there's sun on the ground. And I'm flying with Zulu Oscar. There's Tango Tango and his strong climb. Still still going up at 4.1 meters a second. There he goes. And uh, I get four here, so th there's, there's good air. Um, Hotel 7, Biff Huss, Juliet Lima, John Luban, Dave Leonard. Victor 1, um, there's 9 Bravo and Romeo 9, the task winner for the day, and 1 Charlie. And I believe those guys started slightly ahead of me. I'm not positive. But uh, that was a lay of the land coming in here. And there is one 
thing that I think really benefited um, this gang. I was with this sort of large group, um, Alpha 8, 2 Tango, 9-0, same guys I've been flying with a lot of the other days. And I stayed with that group, but I remember thinking about this. Um, we weren't going to be able to go deep in this, and there really isn't much of a gain. Um, you're basically losing distance by coming here to, you know, tangent to, to this uh, from the last turn. And these guys soaked in and went a little farther east and got extra distance, not because this leg was much longer, but because the next leg was going to be that much longer. And I, I really wish I would have done this. You can see Tango Tango stepping over there. I can't remember exactly what the lay of the land was here, but obviously there was something here to drive these guys over here, and uh, we were all coming here. But I lose a little distance here and lose a little speed, and that's what that's worth to you. Probably not very much because I don't have the context of what these guys saw here. But at the end of the day, um, one Charlie gets more distance than me, and um, we finish together, and this is pretty much where he... He got it. Romeo Fox, um, same thing. And there's 8-9-er. Rick Ingerbro. Sorry, Rick. For some reason, I just cannot pronounce his name properly. So we get into this turn. Get away from that rain. Off we go. Big group. Everybody's fat, dumb, and happy. And... Um, we're relatively high still, 12, 13, 12, 11, so no problems there. Papa 7's, I think, out ahead, so, or no, Papa 7's behind, yeah. So that's how far Papa 7 had to start behind. That is going to leave a mark, and uh, he manages to pull it off and still get top 10 points, which is an excellent job. So there we are looking forward. Hotel 7 and Juliet Lima are cranking, Zulu Lima, and... Uh, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine. So it's kind of like a a ten man gaggle here. But it's loose. Keep in mind the scale is this is spread out over three, four miles. Uh four point four meters a second, so it's still strong. Very strong climb. That might be my strongest climb of the day. And I take it for thirty-five forty-seven. I'm right up at 17.5. So getting high going out in the desert. It's always a little weaker going out in, into this desert in Nephi. Um, hopefully one day there's a world championships here because, like hands down, this is the best place I've ever flown. Um, you know, like Tahoe or Minden or there's a couple other places. Uh, Uvalde is excellent, but this is, this is a special uh, place and it's really fun to fly here. Charlie Golf turns right there a little bit, seeing something different. So basically, I've got four guys in tow here, and um, and then nine zero and eight niner. For some reason, uh, Bob and I fly together a lot, and I, I don't think we mean to. We just end up together and think the same way about cloud selection. And uh, that's excellent because they're good pilots and the group is generally faster than the individual and it's lower risk. So just taking a picture here, we've broken away from that pack a little bit behind us, but obviously it divided. There's uh, task winner, uh, Romeo 9. Whoops, scroll that back up for the day. Uh, Joseph Bostick and uh, Romeo Fox, third for the day, eight niner, and I don't see nine Bravo. Where did nine Bravo go? There he is. He's back, back a little further. All right. Nine zero turns right. Alpha eight turns left, and that's a big right turn. So, kind of a silly. Let me zoom out here a little bit. There's the turn area, so that's a 90 degree right turn, Alpha 8, it's right on course to the back right, so it's a little disheartening, 
and we do it to get nothing. So Alpha 8 is going to kill us on that, and, uh, you know, unless you're sure, generally deviations are bad. When Charlie catches up, Romeo 9 catches up, and that deviation gave up all the distance that we gained in here. So they get 10 more K, and then we make a 10 K, 90 degree deviation, basically backwards, and they're right back on us, and they've got 10 kilometers, or whatever that distance was. So that's pretty brutal. Nine Bravo fell back a little bit more. I'm not sure why. He might have pushed in low into the first turn, but excellent pilot, excellent glider, and he's going to come right on back in. One Charlie takes off, and uh, that's a 15K lead for Alpha 8 now in this group. And uh, as I said in the early part, I mean, this is an area task, and Alpha 8 is flying at the top level of the group almost all the time, including today. And what happens, the circumstance that happens in this area task is he he gets down to that last turn first and has to make a decision based on what he sees there. And it looked really ugly. I think the 10 or 15 minutes that we came in behind him, a little sun came on the ground, the cloud cycled a little bit, and a few people pushed in just a little further and, and got some extra distance. Um, Obviously, Alpha 8 didn't take that extra distance into this turn, so he's already a little down on mileage. And he's basically running out of time to use because he, he only has this cylinder, which is cut off here, and the storms are here, he, and, then he, and then back home, uh, you know, which is typically downwind, which isn't that far, maybe 100K, 60 miles. So we're, I don't know, an hour into a three and a half hour task, and uh, I think what he didn't realize here strategically is he was running out of time. Now, that's not any different for any of us. Um, we all knew that we were facing a question of whether we could even get into this turn based on what we're seeing visually here. There's also a lot of storm here, shelves and uh, wild stuff that we were flying under in and around, rain shafts backing out, back in. It, it was, it was uh, intense flying, but nothing severe. There was no huge outflows or huge lightning bolts or anything like that. It was just uh, difficult, I suppose. But any time the sun hit the ground, it was super strong. So just looking to the side here. Alpha 8's about the same altitude, but still maintaining, uh, I don't know what that is, 7, 8K lead. Romeo Fox and 8 Niner are uh, running pretty hard out to the right here. And let me just see what they got. So good, three meters a second. Our group, um, 3.2 and 2.9. So pretty uniform climb rates um, between this, these two groups. And I, I like to just swing around so other people can see where everybody is, even though we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about them today. So there, Alpha 8 makes a big deviation back to the left. At least it's in towards the center of the turn point. This is where I go. The airspace ends here. and uh, But but Alpha 8 probably cuts this one too short. And John, I'm not picking on you. I'm just learning from you. I think uh, you are an incredible pilot. And I really enjoyed flying with you. All right. So... There's the gang. <laughs> uh, two Tango, Nine Bravo caught back up. Romeo Nine, Nine Zero, One Charlie, Alpha Alpha, and Zulu Oscar, Rich Owen. So an excellent group here. Um, you know, I remember at this point in the flight looking down there and just going, oh boy. You know, probably that's what John said is, you know what? I'm not going to play the game here. I'm going to get down there and get in and finish and let all these other guys try and milk out some more miles and land out. And that's probably what was on his mind. And he was almost right. I think just the sun was a little too intense this day and anywhere the sun touched the ground it was like a volcano of lift. 2.4, 2.6, so 
decent climb. It looks like that's our maximum scoring point for this uh, for this turn. We're at 15.3, so still high. 8.9 are going a little deeper. And basically that's the turn. So if you look vertically, we have committed. And now we're kind of headed towards, and if you look here, this is a storm. And there's a little bit of outflow. It's kind of moving this way somehow. And, and there's, there's a little bit being kicked up in front of it here. So we're going this way to go get in it and come across. Why we didn't go any further, I don't know. But I, I wish we would have. Same thing as in the other turn. But again, three years later, I, I just don't have the data. My plan is now to put a GoPro on the front of my glider and then have it take pictures every minute so that I could use these for these replays and at least say what I'm, say what I'm seeing because unless you're a glider pilot, some of this might be a little boring. All right, so Alpha 8, pretty far down the track. Um, he's, he still looks pretty high. Yep, so 7 Tango's at 14.2. He looks about the same. There's Zulu Lima who started early. DG who started early, eight, eight, Hotel 7 who started early, Victor 1 who started early. So everybody's pretty much going the same pace. This group might have gained a little on some of these guys, but Alpha 8 is obviously pulled away. I think he actually started behind me. I um, can't remember, but he's flying faster. And I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit because this was wild. There's a couple areas in here, and I'm not sure where, where we're flying under. It is black above us and black here to the west. And there's, you know, a little bit of a, uh, well, it's a south wind, which is the track of the storms, if you remember from the radar replay. But um, it just a, there's a little bit of lift in here, and the, the bottoms of the clouds are still working. And um, there's a little bit of sun on the ground maybe over here right now. Not much. Obviously, that's way off course, and you can see the next turn area here. But it's only 22.14, so we've only been on task for an hour and a half at this point. It's three hours and 30 minutes, and Alpha 8 is here. This is closed off, and there just isn't enough time left here um, to get the mileage in. So there's going to be a lot of earlies, and... Look at all those minimum times. So, more, what, 75, 80% of the group was early, and not just a little early. It's 330, 255, 245, 250, 256, 234. I mean, hyper early. And for those of you who don't race sailplanes in an area task, your mileage gets divided by the minimum time. So if you come in early, you didn't use all the time to develop mileage, you really have a hit to your average score. And it's okay to go long, you could go four hours, you still get your mileage divided by four hours. All right, so we've pulled ahead a little bit of 909 Bravo, Romeo Fox, 89er. We've gained a little bit, and this is our little team here. Third place, first place, fifth place, and uh, I can't remember who the others were. Uh, second was Jim Lee, so, so sorry, Jim was second. Robin Clark was third place, and I'll show that save that he makes. It's pretty exciting. And uh, fourth place, Alpha Alpha. And I didn't spend enough time watching his flight. But there he is, right there in front of us. So his, his timing in the day is pretty darn good. Um, I think we picked a good start time. So there, um, you can see here on this uh, 2D, Alpha 8 is just banging it in there. And I think he's still relatively high. He had such good pace, he's just pacing forward. He wasn't giving up a lot of altitude, and he and uh, Delta Golf there uh, touched the first, touched the turn first, and turn and 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 run for home, thinking that 
not a lot of other people are going to be able to get this done and they were pretty close to being right now at this point i have to give kudos to jim lee um you know i'm a big believer that you know three smart pilots are faster than one um and i think that holds true and i think i really wanted to go i looked very closely here i remember looking at my computer and saying okay i'm this far away from there i'll arrive at this altitude and playing with a phone or something to sort of figure out what what that would look like there's you know nobody out there that i could see i didn't know where these guys were i don't have a massive flarm range for whatever reason i know some of you guys get 20k but it, when i saw him kind of bend left here this was the big decision point right here where i was thinking about <laughs> running out there and running home um, but what we saw was some hard bottom clouds that were kind of reforming here and they took us to you know maybe this spot and now you could see where we got we got a ton of extra distance alpha 8 touches here this is a 40k radius so we go another i don't know 30 40k or 25 30k back and then get that distance back so it's a 60k advantage and uh if I look here, I think we went a little farther in the other turns, so 394, and uh, I get 485. So it's 85, um, that's basically 100 kilo uh, kilometers further, or 90 kilometers further. And, uh, on, and then also Alpha 8, unfortunately, is so fast that he does this and there really wasn't much more mileage for him to do. There was absolutely, I mean, a pilot like that doesn't turn and run based on there not being some good mileage here. There was nothing here. This was all blown out and wiped out from the storm or the outflow from the storm. There was no clouds here, but we managed to go around it and get into the sun a little while longer and get to this distance here. Um, and... Jim Lee kind of made me do that. I'm not going to lie. Um, I thought about it, but I thought, um, you know, I saw my brain is processing here at this point. What does he see and what is he going to do? Now, the, the reason that Alpha 8 and these guys turned around and ran wasn't really just that this sucked. It was that um, this going back here was blue and awful there were no hard hard bottom clouds it was getting weak and that was shadow from this storm as the sun was coming down uh, i'm not oh you can see me the, the sun is coming down here from the northwest and is shadowing all this off but there was kind of sun on the ground here and um down here and that's kind of what we did is, is this on the way home anyway um you know i don't know if jim piece together all of that but we certainly knew that we were going to be early at this point if we just ran in and turned and uh so i said let's go with it and then at that point also you know you're thinking okay this is my team i'm going to fly with these guys and we're going to help each other and we're going to get it figured out and do this and um and it, you know so there's maybe five ten fifteen minutes here that i thought about it a number of times what am i doing what's going on i saw some of these guys coming out low and look back to my left out of the left side of the of the of the glider so this way back towards home and said oh my god there's nothing there and then my thought was okay this is the way home go across the desert here in the short spot and get up on these high high clouds and get home but i i can't communicate with one charlie um, Jim Lee or Alpha Alpha or nine or eight but um, you know I, I hope that this group would think together for as long as possible and we can make something happen but the other thing that was thinking that I was thinking was well we're gonna land out but let's go get as many miles as we can and see what happens and uh, I didn't have a motor and there were no airports back here so there, the pucker factor was pretty high there was flat enough spots where i could have landed without damaging the glider i think but this was bleak and i i opened this up to agl today just um so that we could watch how low some of the people are getting going back north but 
um, even though we're at um, 12,100 feet, that is only 7,200 feet. So we're 5,000 feet uh, elevation here in this part of the world. Okay, so look at this, just the whole fleet, other than uh, Zulu Oscar and Foxtrot Hotel, are just touching in here and running. You can see Delta Golf and uh, Alpha 8 way ahead of the group now. Um, that's just John, very, very fast. And, uh, you know, he's a mountain pilot. He's comfortable with this stuff. Um, there's nine Bravo. Where's nine zero? No. Okay, nine zero I think has already touched and ran. So zoom in here just a little bit more. Yep, nine zero is on the way back north. So we are really pushing hard here, and I don't think we could have made it back this way. I, I don't. I think we would have all landed out. I'm going to flip this around so we can see the activity back to the north. And when Charlie kind of hits something, it doesn't work. And that's enough to shift all of our brains into, oh shit, what are we going to do? But fortunately, and I think it was him who led. Yep. But you can see there, I'm trying to get into echelon, or not echelon, side by side here so we can work together. I knew that this is going to be difficult, but at least he chose the same tactic that I kind of hoped for. And also, uh, yeah, there's an airport over here. So, you know, at this point, I don't know if that's an airport or a turn point. Actually, I'm not even positive that that's an airport, but maybe that's what we were going for at this point. Um, Alpha 8 and DG, they made it back onto the hills here. 52, so we've only been flying for an hour and two hours, roughly. I mean, Alpha 8's almost home. We are way behind. 0.7, so um, the the clouds and the, the storm and, and the rain, if you remember from, what time is it right now? It's about 5 o'clock. So if I go... Over to Finder and four, five o'clock. Sorry, we want seventeen hundred. Yeah, so we're we're coming out of here. We went into here or in here somewhere like that, and now we're trying to get to this to come back home. So that's why it's so weak in here. And this is the shadow that's killing everybody coming back north was from this big thing. This is all shadowed out because the sun is right here right now at probably 30 degrees up. And so this is creating a huge shadow and that's a big, big storm. That's what's going on. So shit climb, we are give you the altitude 4,000 feet above the ground which in this space I mean I fly 4,000 feet in Michigan all the time and I feel fine I felt like I was 1,500 feet above the ground for a lot of this it was scary and it's just because the space is so big and it was so bleak looking home but the storms are here they're moving north a little bit which is wedging up a little bit of something or at least that's what we're hoping for and uh, this is ugliness here. I'm sort of glad we're not zoomed in. Um, you can see how low AGL, 5,000 feet being the floor, some of these guys are getting. Okay, so here we are with um, Romeo Fox, who's basically did the standard thing, a little uh, red shifted from Alpha 8, starting a little later back towards me getting a little bit more distance in the first, a little bit more distance in the second, and touching the third. Um, but when he went through this, 20 minutes, 30 minutes after Alpha 8 and uh, DG, um, I, it, 
it even looked softer. And he blasted out over the desert here. There's his AGL, so watch that. And got really low. I think the lowest was 1,600 feet. So it's 18. Okay. So up he goes. Oh, no, he misses that. This is that. Everybody's fighting, fighting, fighting. 17, 16. He gets a little positive air, and then he turns. And this is 5 meters a second for 8,000 feet. It starts off as nothing. He does two or three turns here in nothing. Um, you know, he's, he was 1,600 feet above the ground. He's probably still got his water. He does his pull up, or maybe he's dumped. And then watch it increase. 2.5, still weak, three, a little pulse of three, four. And then he's getting sevens and eights. And look at that increase. And look at this corkscrew. I mean, he's, he's gaining 800 feet a turn. It's just monstrous. So 10 minute thermal comes back up and the other guys find something. So there's obviously something here, a little bit of sun on the ground or a cloud, but that was heroic. And uh, 1600 feet over that part of the desert. If you look around, you know, the next airport is way the hell up here. Um, there's a little town over there, but he's pretty isolated at that point. So good on you to uh, Robin and uh, let me shift back over to myself so we can finish up the flight okay so here we are we've uh, just left that mess um, it was like one knot we've gotten over to this airport crispy I'm not sure if that's a turn point or an airport and let me speed this back up a little bit but uh, this group works together super well and uh, it's pretty scary at this point because we're going up into another area of heavy rain and uh, we're low. We are 4,400 feet and we still have a ways to go to get to that rain. So we're still sort of crossing the desert. But I do remember these hills as being something that we thought could kick something off. There may be 500 foot or 1,000 foot hills and uh, you notice there, I, we're working really well together with Jim. Um, we're not, uh, I need to back up a little bit, but we're, we're, we're splitting up when it's weak. We're not flying in the same air. We're sp splitting up, searching, you know, multiple sides of where someone does a pull up and um, trying our best to, to work as a team. And Romeo 9 and Alpha Alpha help a little bit as well. So there I move out ahead, get 1.2 from the um, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 there. This is painful, but uh, we only finished 15, 20 minutes late on the minimum time. So there really wasn't too much of a point of going fast here because our computers probably still showed that we were going to be pretty early at this point based on our average speed so far. And so now it's just a matter of getting up. And... Romeo 9 left behind there a little bit on that climb. He still manages to catch back up. We get up to 11, 12,000 maybe. And again, my mindset is there's no real point to lead way out ahead and, you know, be a hero. Um, if you hit left, turn in it, show it to the group, because then you have more wings sweeping the air around you and, and helping you out. So Romeo 9 found uh, 1.4 meters a second down low, so he didn't get left behind. He found a better core. And maybe we missed it to both sides here, <laughs> and he's coming up at a, at a faster climb rate in the middle. And that is a minus 2, so we know it climbs super well. All right, so we're back up to a reasonable altitude, 13.3. And... Uh, we're getting back on this high ground here a little bit. And you remember that this is all rain showers and wind and pretty dark. So they're 
Well, it's about as close as we're going to get. And we're just working on the shelf along the edge of that rain. Obviously, the sun is from the camera angle right now, so there's lots of sun getting in there, heating it up, mixing with that uh, line of storms. And there's uh, Tango Tango, who gets eighth for the day. Papa Seven, another miracle starting that late. He had a low save as well. So all these guys um, got really low going through there. And that's what it looked like it was going to be when we saw them go through there. Relatively speaking, we look pretty comfortable never getting lower than 4,000 feet AGO. And uh, now we, we have clouds, we have what looks like reasonable conditions. There's no rain between us and the, uh, and the finish, although there is some rain over here. And actually at some point I turn us left, this is it, I turn us left and decide to go out and around something that's here. And uh, they all follow wisely and we start piecing together, I think, a little stronger lift. Maybe not. Uh, one Charlie, 1 1.2. Romeo 9, 1.7. Look at Romeo 9 climbing. He's probably dry, I'm guessing. Maybe it's just a lighter wing loading or it just climbs better, but uh, he seems to have consistently better climbs than us. Sorry, the view isn't very good. And 2.1 for Romeo 9 now. Two to my weaker climb. So Romeo 9 is really climbing well. And if we have any water right now, in hindsight, we probably didn't need it to go through this. And we would have been better off climbing better, considering our cruising speeds are so slow. So yeah, we're cruising at 160. So what's that? 100 with a little bit of a tailwind, maybe 90. You don't really need water. Or you don't need full water at that point. Somehow I got a little ahead of the group there. And I can't remember when or if I dumped. But uh, we're going to make it home. And these guys all passed me going into the finish here. This is a little way that we play these hills. And uh, they all jump me. And I finish a mile or two behind them, which really hurt <laughs> because uh, I think it, maybe it was because I was dry or I just made some mistakes, but it's, it was painful to watch this. So we're Bruno four, uh, Bruno Vassal B4, the contest manager, landed out super hard to um, <laughs> run a contest and fly in a contest. And he's also flying a 15 meter glider, which would have made a big, big difference today. And it's a pure. You can see Zio and Papa Seven and Tango Tango bringing it in. Eighth and uh, eighth and ninth or so. And so right up to this point, I'm still in a really good space, but you can see I go over the back side a little too far and get into some sink, I believe. Looks, you can see how far down I come there. One Charlie doesn't come down anywhere near as much. I basically almost get close to landing out. Um, you know, because there were very few climbs left at this point. I think it's after six o'clock and the air is pretty darn still. You can see we're 30 degrees off, staying on the high terrain as long as we can. One Charlie has moved into a powerful position there. He's at 10 and I'm at 96, so 400 feet, give or take. One day I'll learn how, which way to spin the wheel to go in or out, I promise. And then one, JS1, putting the whoop on. 
and what's that? 0.6, so you can see there's almost nothing. I get 1.1, two minutes, get 500 feet, but that also, I think, includes the pull-up. And that's it. We go for home, and I'm less wing loading, behind, lower, and uh, just get my lungs ripped out here and barely make it back at 6,500 feet. That was painful. And look at Romeo 9. Killing it. I think Alpha Alpha goes over the top of me for good measure. Yep. Look at that. That was painful. Yeah, I must have been dry. That's kind of what it feels like. One Charlie has a jet. I'm not sure about Alpha Alpha, and I'm not sure about Romeo 9. Yeah, at least that's what I'm going to say. So I can cope with it mentally. But, uh, anywho, that's it. I think we are the last finishers. And yeah, you can see us there in the bear graph. There's only one or two others out there. All right, so um, back to the scores. Congratulations uh, to Joe Bostic, who won the day. That was an impressive flight, 134.43, almost 500 kilometers, and uh, really well done. And I enjoyed flying with this group, and I enjoyed uh, the way that we solved the puzzle there on the way back home. But even though that final glide direct looked bleak man was that amazing there were 10 knot climbs in there um but it looked very very bleak and i i still comfortable with the decision we made to kind of go around it although it wasn't ideal um second jim lee who you saw a lot of that flight fun flying with jim that day robin clark you saw robin's flight robin is super fast and uh and he he called that perfectly and uh he had a group around him there there must have been something there queuing them off but he pushed in pretty low to get that and it paid off with the third for the day good for him uh alan adams who you saw flying in our group in a js3 really fast gliders um five was me sean fiddler six peter dean we didn't see a lot of him but peter's flying really well and uh uh, JS3 as well. Seventh, Annie Blackburn, another JS3. Eighth, where's eighth? Eighth, Gary Itner, who started super late, who started, uh, where's his start time? Right there, 15.03 to, um, like John Seaborn's, 14.43. So 20 minutes after John. Um, and I was uh, right with, I started pretty much right before John. So um, that was pretty impressive. I did, he would not have wanted to be late that day. And it's not like he caught up early. He just managed to tough it out and get home. Tim Taylor, great flight. Looked like he found a big climb on the way home to get into the finish. And 10th, uh, oh, my eyes are glazing over here. 10th, Noel Wade, who's been having you know, top 10 finishes every day. Good, good flying, Noel. Okay, so that's it for, uh, for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next couple days, I'll get the final two or three flights in and start moving on to Uvalde. Um, leave any comments you can on the YouTube uh, uh, comments or in the, any of the social media spots where I post it. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching and uh, looking forward to next year's soaring season. See you soon.